Good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome to the 17th annual Justice John Paul Stevens Awards Ceremony, Awards Luncheon. Um, my name is Dan Coton. I am this year's president of the Chicago Bar Association, and along with Chuck Smith, who is this year's president of the Chicago Bar Foundation, thank you for joining us here today. We have a record turnout, 450 plus people, for an event which I think over the past 17 years really has become uh, a tradition at the Chicago Bar. And uh, it seems that every year it continues to be a highlight of the bar year. And so thank you all so very much for being here. And now let me turn the dais over to Chuck Smith, who will share a brief history of this wonderful event. Thank you, Dan. First of all, on behalf of the Chicago Bar Foundation, I'd like to welcome you to the lunch. Um, the Bar Foundation is the charitable arm of the Chicago Bar Association, and so we are intertwined partners in furthering the interests of the, of the bench and bar in Chicago. Um, and we'll talk a bit at the end here about the CBF, if you will indulge me, but just a bit. Because this, this is about the Stevens Award, and, and when I look at the list of past recipients, I think the Stevens Award is really the Hall of Fame of Chicago lawyers. And, and when I researched the history of it, and Bob Glaze at the CBF helped me with this, um, it made a lot of sense. This award was founded by Justice Stevens' law clerk 17 years ago, uh, along with the CBA and the CBF as a tribute to the justice, but the way to be a tribute to this justice who was so important to the bar in the city of Chicago before he went on to the Seventh Circuit and the Supreme Court was to honor attorneys who best exemplify Justice Stevens' commitment to integrity and to public service in the practice of law. Um, so for the last 17 years, we've had a wonderful list of people who are in your program and the folks who are in front of you today are worthy additions to that incredible group. Um, just a second about the Chicago Bar Foundation. You have some information at your tables about the CBF, but the CBF is committed to carrying on Justice Stevens' commitment to the noblest traditions of our profession, and in particular, in using our abilities as lawyers to help those less fortunate. Um, that is what the CBF is about. The CBF gives money through in grants to public interest organizations throughout Chicago. It gives free pro bono and uh, free assistance on public interest, on board development, on a number of other fronts, has developed uh, projects like the Justice Entrepreneurs Project and others, innovative projects that are being copied around the country. And all of that is done through the support of people like you in this room, and I, and I hope that um, over the next year of my term as president, you will consider supporting the Bar Foundation in the great work that it does around the city. Um, circling back to Justice Stevens, his pro bono and public service in his career as a practicing lawyer and as a judge is a great inspiration to all of us in this room, all of us in the legal community, as we step up in leadership to fill our nation's fundamental principle of equal access to justice for all. Um, thank you again for all of your support of the CBA and the CBF. I stand between some of you and lunch, so I'm going to keep it brief. But if any of you have questions about the Chicago Bar Foundation, please feel free to talk to me afterwards or to shoot me an email or give me a call. I'm happy to talk to anybody about why you should support the organization. And congratulations again to all the award winners. Okay, folks, we're going, to, uh, we're going to get started with our program now in the interest of time. I think, I think everybody's been, been served their meals at least, but please feel free to keep eating and enjoy your lunch. But uh, we're going to get uh, started with our program largely because of the fact that we have nine recipients this year and, uh, and Justice Stevens has to, has to get out of town. Um, all of our award recipients this year and for the past couple of years um, rather than stepping up and, and giving their acceptance remarks live in front of uh, all of us, have done brief videos um, accepting their awards. So you're going you're gonna to see those videos. And uh, in the interest of time, I think what I'll do is uh, a brief introduction of the first four recipients. And you'll see their videos. And then we're going to ask them to come up and take a picture with Justice Stevens. 
and then they'll sit and we'll do the remaining five recipients. Um, and so that's the sequence of how we're going to go about this. Um, my introductions are very, very brief. Just a few lines about each person. I think all of you have programs on your, ta on your seats which have the full biographies and explanations of each of the recipients and explaining why each and every one of them are so deserving. Um, but all I can say is that as we go through these nine individuals, keep in mind that when selecting our awardees, the Stevens Committee seeks lawyers who best exemplify Justice Stevens' commitment to public service and integrity during the course of their practices of law. Thomas Anthony Durkin is a former assistant United States attorney, and he has had a stellar career as a criminal defense lawyer here in Chicago. But so much attention that has been uh, paid to, to Tom Durkin over the past decade or decade and a half has been you know, through his efforts related to terrorism, both international terrorism and domestic terrorism. And I think it's safe to say that so much of this work has been truly pro bono on his part. Uh, a truly deserving recipient of the John Paul Stevens Award, Tom Durkin. Be even mentioned in the same breath as John Paul Stevens, just much less receive an award in his honor is beyond my wildest expectations and I'm tremendously honored and, and flattered to receive this award and I thank the Chicago Bar Association and the Chicago Bar Foundation uh, the greatest satisfaction of my legal career has been our firm's representation of unpopular defendants and the very positive reception I've received for doing that from both the bench and the bar. Um, and, and it makes me proud to be a lawyer. I've always been proud to be a lawyer. Um, but after nine trips to Guantanamo, um, I'm very concerned that the principles of the Chicago Bar Foundation and the principles of the Stevens Award remain utmost in, in, in the minds of all lawyers because we are in, in very difficult times. Um, and I would only read from Justice uh, Stevens' opinion in Rumsfeld versus Padilla back in June of 2004 where he warned that Unconstrained executive detention for the purpose of investigating and preventing subversive activity is the hallmark of the Star Chamber. Access to counsel for the purpose of protecting the citizen from official mistakes and mistreatment is the hallmark of due process. For if this nation is to remain true to the ideal symbolized by its flag, it must not wield the tools of tyrants even to resist an assault by the forces of tyranny. I'm delighted to be here, delighted to be in the same room with Justice Stevens and I thank you again.